In today's video, join us on a fantastic adventure to arguably Scotland's finest mountain, Anchalik. Hopefully that's no Sunday getting rescued already. It's only 11 o'clock. Today we are headed up Anchalik, aka the Forge. And this is the start of the walk from the Dundonnell end. We also plan to camp out tonight. Got the big camping pack. It is perfect hiking conditions this weekend. It's sunny, but the temperature is only like 12 to 14 degrees Celsius. So the back isn't quite like a fishmonger's window yet. And there's a nice cool breeze occasionally, just to take the heat off, shoot bear box. Just over an hour gone, and got about 400 meters under our belt. So we're nearly halfway there in terms of altitude. Distance wise, I'm not even looking. <laughs> but aye, we're making slow but steady progress. Haven't seen much in the way of water, so whenever we see a trickle, I'm going to top up. I always remember the first time that I did Anchalik, I had a sore knee, it was all strapped up, and we did the, there's a grade 3 scramble around the other side called the Corrie Vue, I think it's pronounced. It's a grade 3, and honestly, I was halfway up it and I bottled it, let my friend Hendel go on and me and my other friend Phil, we just headed back down, took the bypass path and got ourselves back on the ridge. It's a serious scramble that one. So we won't be doing it today because uh, we've got another objective later on is to get a satellite peak called Sailvor, which is a Corbett that I need. And if all goes well, it'll be my 200th Corbett. So quite a nice little milestone as well. Nice little bouldery section here. And the route ahead is around here. And from memory, I think we just sort of head up here. Strike a pulse. Hi. Not far to go now, folks. The first Munro is in our shite. Yes. Check this out folks, there's the pinnacles, first one row, just here above Stevie. We are pretty much just below the first one row of the day, Bidian Aglas Tool, I think it's how you pronounce it. And then we've got Skewer Fiona at the back there, a nice pointy one, and then I think I could just make out Lord Berkeley's seat just through the gap there. It's half two folks. We are right below the summit. So that took about three hours 40. I think it was uh, 10 to 11 that we set off. Bye. Just up here. What a day folks, absolutely cracking. The light just isn't quite right on the ridge there, but you're not gonna complain. We're not in the clag, so aye, that's a winner. 
Kev, what's the time? Rap o'clock. Well folks, we're just heading off the first Munro on our way to Skewer Fiona now and then we need to think about where we're going to camp because the time is currently 25 to 4 Sunset's about 8 Doesn't give us much time to motor on over the Corbett and get pitched So we have to do the Corbett tomorrow But we shall see anyway See what this script is That there is Sail Vore, that's the Corbett we want to do But we're just not getting that far tonight, no danger -oo. No chance No Stuart Granger Just be Kev Oh wow, yes Super boss Check this out folks what a view! Hazy views there over in the Fisher Field. Cracking area that by the way. Probably the most remote in Britain. But yeah, this is a great perch to be on. Super boss! Well, we need to think about bailing, finding somewhere to pitch. Problem is, we don't have enough water with us, so we're going to have to try and drop down somewhere, pick up some aqua, so we can cook up meals tonight. And means we can't go and have a little play on the ridge and Lord Berkeley's seat either. So I'll have to wait for another day. Hmm. So that is the Munro that we've just came off Here is Lord Berkeley's seat And then you've got all the scrambly ridge there All your fun Well, water is becoming a bit of an issue as well There's absolutely nothing on the ridge as you would expect Not even a rock pool though And at the Bialik there we could see water We are talking about a 200 metre drop down which We just don't want to do as there's no Munro's on this ridge, this is far less frequented but it's actually turned out to be a really nice ridge walk and we've got cracking views back to the main Anchalic ridge behind us but uh, yeah, this is good There's a very faint path in places but generally not many people come along here Just about to reach the summit of Skur Craig and Eich it's a Munro top, so it's not a, on the 282 list I don't know why this isn't a Munro because It's got a decent distance away from Anchalik's main ridge But I'll show you the view in a minute There we go Well folks, that was the best Golden Eagle sighting I've had Possibly ever Stevie startled it by accident and it flew off and it was just soaring above and I think it was actually just put on the display Got some footage and managed to enjoy it as well without recording But aye, super boss Love a Goldie sighting <laughs> There's a reason why people do not combine Sail Vore with Anchalik Because it's a bloody mission The euphoria of doing that ridge has long worn off And this is becoming a bit of a trudge and it's gone 6 o'clock We're still nowhere near the Corbett We're water depleted And there's no pitches up here So we've got no choice but to push on Jeez I think if we started at 8 o'clock it would have gave us a better chance but hey ho, it is what it is Whew. 
Well, we've dropped off the ridge a wee bit early. It's really quite craggy at the end of the ridge. It's hard to gauge if there's any sort of safe points to get off. So, looking at the map, we've identified this. Pretty safe ramp all the way down into the bog. Found the water source folks, it's a nice wee trickle, that'll do it. It's getting boiled anyway. Getting midged by the way, I don't know if you can see them in the camera. Oh, evil little buggers, evil. And guess who's not got a midge net with them? Me. Aye, that'll do. So that there is the core bit. We just don't have enough time or energy to get that far, so we're hoping there's going to be pictures in this little lump here, which is about ah oh, midges, which is about 500 meters high, and hopefully there's a breeze. That helicopter is buzzing around Anchalik between the two Munros. Hopefully it's just a, a training exercise and nobody's injured. But in other news, folks, I am struggling. Oh man, I'm digging deep here. <sighs> Sunset's in about an hour's time. We've only got another couple hundred meters to get to the top of this little bump. But I, I'm, I was gonna say, aye, I'm fucked. You get the drift. <sighs> oh man. Good morning campers, how's it going? Apologies about the lack of filming last night, but I felt seriously dodgy by the way. Felt really weak, sick. I got the tent set up, managed to do a wee uh, time lapse of the sunset, but I, I was knackered, really did not feel good. First time I've went to bed without my dinner, by the way. So I, I'm feeling a bit better this morning. I think I might have been a little bit dehydrated. Got some water on the boil. Kev's gave me a banana, so uh, I do feel hungry, so I'm going to get some food down me, hopefully feel better. But anyways, enough about me, um, and what I'll do is I'll show you the conditions that are coming in. It's looking good for another fine day. Not too shabby folks, and obviously this is our target for later on this morning. Look at this huge bit of erratic, just sitting on the summit of this little top that we're on. I think we're just shy of 600 meters here, I'm sure I heard Kev say it was 595 or something like that. Anyways, let's see if this water's on the boil. Well, Fisher Field is looking absolutely stunning. They've got Ben Jerick Vor and Ben Jerick Peak. Me and Kev did them a few years ago, a wild camping trip. And then obviously we've got Ann Chalak here as well that we did yesterday. So yeah, we're just slowly packing up, enjoying the fine morning, and we'll get going shortly. Just approaching the summit here, and there's a large herd of feral goat. I 
There's two cairns on this top. One is a lot bigger, but there's a bit of a dip, so I think the first one there was the true summit. You can just see here, there's a bit of a shelter stroke cairn, which I'll visit as well, just to make sure. But look at the views, by the way. Yeah, this is definitely a bit smaller in height than the other one, but if you're a bagger, you've got to do it. But uh, yeah, check out the views down Little Loch Broom, out towards the Summer Isles, and well, pr pretty much the western seaboard. Hey folks, it's certainly turning out better than yesterday. The clarity is far better. Yesterday was really hazy, and didn't quite get the views we wanted. Not complaining, obviously, but aye, look at that. Cracking. We are just hand railing this little stream down, and then it takes us to the confluence where we've got a wee river crossing. And then uh, apparently there's some good waterfalls here, so I'm looking forward to seeing them. It's actually a decent sized river this. Well that river crossing did require a little bit of thought, it wasn't the most straightforward. Kev just bossed it there though, like a swan. I don't know how swans cross rivers but... Fantastic waterfall here. It's just a little bit awkward to get close to it for a good photo. Don't want to fall down the edge. Some cracking waterfalls there just to break up the last of this walk. But, anyways, it's been a fantastic weekend on arguably Scotland's finest mountain and chalk. But uh, I'm going to wrap this up. What I'll do is I'll leave a couple of well camping videos here that you might like to watch. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.